Maika. Oops, let out by Gary Schmidt. And Livingston by shirt level. 9,000 Livingston fans certainly making their presence felt. We have sunshine at Hamden. We've had torrential rain for the last hour and a half, I can tell you. The first Celtic Rangers free Scottish Cup final in seven years since Bobby Williamson's Kilmarnock beat Paul Kirk in 1997. Today could be the first manager outside the big two to win two major Scottish trophies since Alex Smith 14 years ago at Aberdeen. But it goes with a 4-3-3 formation when they're attacking. Alan Reid, a more defensive option for Tom McManus, there any change. Thompson, O'Connor and Ryden, Edinburgh born, all lifelong Hibs fans. Thompson, Ryden were here as boys to see their club beat Celtic in 1991 in the final. Ryden and Scott Brown, another homegrown talent, will both have to drop back and cover Livy's wing-backs when Hibs are defending. Livingston, the 20th club to appear in this final. Marvin Andrews, one of the players asked to take a wage cut in administration. They've only won one game in six since then. Andrews' defence has kept 14 clean sheets this season. He's from Trinidad, Rubio from Madrid. And he'll fully feel the emotion of today's minute silence in remembrance of this week's bomb victories. For Stuart Lovell, today's match means that much more. He played 104 games for Hibs, but was heartachingly axed from the starting lineup on the eve of the 2001 Scottish Cup final against Celtic and left for Livingston shortly afterwards. His brother Simon has flown from Austra Australia to see him. Ryden reportedly being watched by Tottenham today after netting 10 goals this season. The 21 year old is among Bobby Williamson's cherished group of exciting young players. The referee. Billy Young took the Bells Cup final in October, Inverness Caledonian Thistle and Airdrie. He's also officiated at the Scottish Cup final too, so it's a clean sweep for him. A lawyer from Ayrshire, and we will have a minute silence in remembrance for those who lost their lives to the terrorists in Madrid this week. And for Oscar Rubio, a poignant moment, a 27 year old from Madrid, started his football career at Real. And I feel this more than anyone in the stadium. away to the left in this first half. Derek Lilly and David Fernandez up front for Livingston. Fernandez Livy's record sale when he went to Celtic, now back at the club. And it's the underdogs who get us off and underway. As I say, if you go on recent form between the two and league position, right, then Hid should be the underdogs, but because of their overwhelming support here, Ray, you have to fancy them. Well, also the, they've got a lot of younger players in the team as well, which could count later on in the game, Jonathan. Immediately on the attack, but Emmanuel Gerardo got in and thumped it away under pressure from Young Brown. And the 18 years of age got Brown. Great Ivy's roar rings around Hamburg. That's the 
far post. And an early touch of the ball for the Livingston goalkeeper, Roddy McKenzie. Alan Murdoch, who had gone forward. Good header, wasn't it, for Murdoch? He heads it down, no one in front of the goalkeeper. That's a position you normally find your striker in there. But O'Connor had just come off him. If he stayed there, he could have had a simple tap in. forward in search of his second goal and a good goal message from David Beckham this week going into the game was at Manchester United as part of Beckham's group as a young man Jamie McAllister will take the throw in and two finals both uh, League Cup and at Scottish Cup when he was at Aberdeen by Celtic Burton O'Brien, who wants to go forward and out wide to the left-hand side to get the crosses in. And Daniel Anderson, the Swedish international, in goal for Hibs. That won't help his nerves. As for the first 10-15 minutes in cup finals, are normally about Jonathan not making too many mistakes because both sets of players uh, will be very nervous. Indeed, hardly any of these have played in major cup finals so they're going to find their feet for the first 10 minutes or so Hernandez free kick for high kicking Hibs have won this competition on a couple of occasions in the early 70s they beat Celtic 2-1 certain Mr Kenny Dudley scored Celtic's goal the day that Pat Stanton scored and Jimmy O'Rourke scored do you know I came here to the final 1971 Celtic 6 Hibernian 1 I was only a little boy at the time Indeed. Early settling down period for both fans and players. McAllister, Glasgow born. In the final when he was Queen of the South as well, I think he was beaten in there. And a major final in Scotland. Tackle on him. And right to Brown. Ryden's in the middle. Litter of balloons that will be thrown into hits. And next to there, Kevin Thompson from Edinburgh. This is David McNamee. Another one of Bobby Williamson's youngsters, Kevin Thompson. was here at, uh, in 1991 watching their uh, League Cup success, their second success it's to confirm it that for me for Livingston and a scrappy early passage of play conditions aren't in terms of the wind aren't perfect it is blustery so the pitch has a little bit of give in it. Yeah, it's actually starting to cut slightly. You know, players have been slipping over slightly. This is the noise from the Hibs fans. to the way Bobby Williamson's doing things there. I mean, the core of this Hibs side, Edinburgh-born players, lifelong High Beast fans. Mm. Ronan Edge, the Gillingham boy. Kevin Thompson once again. This is Gary O'Connor, Scottish international. Smith, looking for Scott Brown. And then he was covered well. Smith of the throw, looking for Brown once again. Scored upon throws in the second round. Sucked to the knees. And with uh, Stuart McCauley, the assistant referee on the far side. Good tackle, this isn't. There you go, have some of that. 
In fairness, Timmy stood up. Yeah. And take a tackle, the assistant. By Marvin Andrews, has captained his country, turned out into Bagel in the pass. Band is offside. Really make it to, at Celtic. One of the 19 games there. There's Bobby Williamson, the Gibbs uh, manager, was a striker at Rangers. Says when he went to Edinburgh, he was dubbed a a week, is it, yeah. Ray, which is a Rangers man? Uh, yeah, someone from Glasgow. From Glasgow. Yeah. Running out once again. Murdoch. Me back. The living someone was pushed. And read the offender. What was Tom McManus be thinking? Read. A little bit more defensive, maybe, than, than McManus. That's why the 22-year-old has gone to the bench, Tom McManus, and misses out on another cup final from the start. I found it very strange, you know, speaking to some reporters before the game in the press room, and they were very surprised that McManus wasn't in the side because they said that his quality of performance this season has been, been very good. Right up climbs. There's a little bit of a push in there, and again away. This is Burton O'Brien. And finds Jamie McAllister. Level wants it. Long while he had it at Reading. Over 220 games. Livingston just knocking it around. Quite confidently. That's Rubio. Lily. Fernandez. Oh, they made a run on that left hand side and they're getting a lot of room over there. This is McAllister. Lily wants it. Came to nothing in the end. They're certainly getting space on that left. Well, what's happening at the moment, you can see, Jonathan, that Hibs are playing with three up, you know, they're just leaving them up there, and that's pinning uh, the Livingston back three back, and, but it's allowing the two wing-backs, particularly McAllister on that left-hand side, to get forward. This form, as we said, is shaky. They haven't won inside 90 minutes in their last six matches. They've lost their last two. McManus more heartache in the final for him O'Connor couldn't keep it in play for Hibbs good pressure in there by Alan Reid and a slip he's flashed through the ladder on the edge of the box behind him maybe McNamee the Glaswegian Murdoch away. Level. Got a space again here for Jamie McAllister. What can he do with it though this time? Disappointing ball in once again. Level makes the run. Covering back in there by Scott Brow. And they get the cross in this time, Livingston. This is McAllister. Dumbo away. Still the pressure is on here. And Hibbs haven't settled. Referee playing on. And uh, Fernandez tried to chip it out wide to McNamee, who was arriving. That's why Livingston didn't get the free kick. Referee was playing an advantage that in the end didn't come. Well, it was all about the poor ball from Fernandez, wasn't it? He's gotten down to the ability. Here's the challenge. I don't think there was too much in it. He's tried to play it, came off the burning lad's foot as he kicked through it there. So I think he'll be okay, McAllister. A lot of the ball, Jamie McAllister. Ten minutes settling period. Certainly for me, Ray. Olivia, you've started the better. Well, they're starting to get the ball into the wide areas where they've got the advantage at the moment. With both fullbacks get. Uh, wing backs getting forward, but the two front men have got to be shown a bit better than laying the ball off. This is a chance for them now. Oh, not a great ball pushed in by Lee Makel. Some experience on him, he was looking for Lily. And cleared away by uh, Gary Smith initially. Mm. 
Makel once again. Fernandez have to stretch. Right up. Finds rolling edge. A bit of uh, naivety there by Ryan. Level. O'Brien again looking for the overlapping run. McAllister. Edge beaten in the air. Chance here for Livingston. Fernandez got Lily towards the far post. Murdoch dies. Corner kick. Neither all there, was it, from Fernandez? He's got ability, but he doesn't show often enough. Long cross field ball here. Rolling edge gets underneath, it goes to David Fernandez. Now you're looking for him to put the ball into the far post. You can see Derek Lilly is in there. He just needs a bit of height on that ball to the far post, and it could have been a good chance for Livingston. Livingston around evens money, 11 to 10 to win the match. Hibbs 11 to 8 on with some bookies. Big powerful header away by Murdoch. Level. Um, also, if I could stay down, now maybe Hibbs can break. And the ball out wide to Scott Brown. He has O'Connor and Ryden in the middle. Head down at the moment. Ryden far post. Just nicked away from him. Good covering back by Lovell. That great covering back to be sure, Lovell. Good break as well from Hibbert, he's shown good pace. Scott Brown takes the defender on, gets it to the far post. You can see Ryden's coming in, but Stuart Lovell does his defensive duties extremely well. Right up forward in the box. Perhaps will be the man they aim for here. Corbell's in there as well, it's deeper. Headed back, keeper's ball, comes, doesn't make great contact, and Corbell up and over. Big and brave and step forward to take the first of the penalties against Rangers in the semi-final. The man who's uh, at his second spell at the clubs, Newcastle player, went there originally on loan and then back to Easter Road in January on a permanent deal. since he moved to Scotland. And he's looking forward for Scott Brown with the pace. That's wasted. Don't forget, you can text us with your thoughts on the game. Text them 80088. Remember to text the word comment and then your opinion. 80088 number once again and we'll read out your text at half time that's a corner kick to Higgs Kevin Thompson's gone across to take it last, last time he took one from that side he, he found Colin Murdoch with a with the corner could it happen again on this occasion Scott Brown standing on the keeper I wonder if he stays there and Caldwell's in there and read towards the near post and he dropped a call it was Headed away, Basco Rubio. And the clubs in Spain, Logrones and Ferenze, having failed to make the uh, the great at Real Madrid. Scored Levis, first goal in Europe, he'll always go down in their cherished memories for that, against Vaduz it was. His defence under pressure again. And this time it was Marvin Andrews, who was just pushed. In front of the referee. I think the referee gave it for a push on the goalkeeper. Mackenzie here, and I think it was uh, Scott Brown who was on, on top of him. Just see this ball comes in here. Keeper tries to come for it. He's actually his own player. <laughs> He's got that totally wrong there, Mr. Young. Maybe McNamee pressurising. Covering back though. Yes, Marvin Andrews, one of the players who was asked to take a wage cut during administration. Could have left, could have gone somewhere else, but stayed to fight the Livingston fight. And this is McNamee He's running into a blind alley there. And then lifted away, and they look for the pace of Brown, and the goalkeeper way outside his penalty area. Ryder. And a challenge by Oscar Rubio. He took a huge gamble here, didn't he? 
Townsend with the ball over the top, looking for the run of Brown. <laughs> Roddy McKenzie, <laughs> well, we'll say he was a good goalkeeper in the end because he got he got in the right position to clear the ball. This is a good run by Thompson. Full of youthful energy. And Gary Smith, full of age and wisdom and experience. Ryden's in the middle, underneath it really. again over the top to the goalkeeper but certainly Hibbs are looking for the pace of this man whenever they can Scott Brown the 18 year 18 year old Reed Hibbs just picking up a little bit this is Ryden chance here not bad effort this is it Hits it with the left foot, bounces in front of the goalkeeper, McKenzie, but he does well to throw it into his body because there's one or two Hibernian players coming in just in case he spilt it. He's got a great free kick against Livingston uh, last season, I seem to remember. This is first major final. He's playing up front with, uh, well, sort of up front with Gary O'Connor, who once denied him a final, playing uh, in the National Boys Club semis here in Scotland. He was playing for Hutchison Vale and uh, O'Connor side Salverson beat them. And he's being watched, we believe, today by Tottenham. According to the newspapers this morning. Fernandez. Looking for Lily. Ryan, this is O'Connor. He's got Brown on the edge of the penalty here, and the Hibs front three now beginning to look lively. He aims at Reed. A bit of buffeting in there. Going to be away by Burton O'Brien. And Lily eased off it by Dumbay. And Hibs beginning to get in their strike. Burning nil. Livingston nil, the CIS Insurance Cup final, approaching 20 minutes. It's a good run by Kevin Thompson. Lacked any final delivery. Direct, isn't he? Just took too long on the ball there, yeah, the right thing. Oh, on the side now, though, and this is a chance. This is Brown for Hibbs. His second or third touch was too far, and it's off the line. Andrew's off the line from O'Connor, but the... The, the chance was Scott Brown's and his control let him down. It was either his second or third touch. It was too heavy. It was too heavy. He tried to chip it over the top of McKenzie as he went through there. But I also thought there was a suspicion of handball there by Andrews. Up and away by Daniel Anderson. That's certainly the closest we've come. And that's a free kick to, to Livingston and Burton O'Brien. Love will take it. And Bryant, only one man in the middle, that's a strong challenge on him anyway by Gary Smith. The veteran, now is he 32? I hate that word, you know. You know, players hate that word, veteran. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Smith lengthening in the tooth. Better? <laughs> Approaching the autumn of his playing career. <laughs> Late summer. Thompson, it's not be done. This is Barry Caldwell to O'Connor. And Andrews once again, who was the man in the right place there to clear off the line from Gary O'Connor. Well, this is the chance. He's on side, certainly is. And as he goes through there, it's his third touch. That's the touch it takes him. Just a little bit too near the goalkeeper. Good save. Does that? There. Did it touch his hand there? Very close, isn't it? We can see, though, that none of the Hibernian players actually shouted for a penalty. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt there. Good open final. This is Matt Lemay. 
defenders once at least further across the top of the picture there, but it's still McNamee going through. With McNamee, that would have been something of a rarity, only his second Livingston goal. Both wing backs, Jonathan Paul, Livingston have been very positive, haven't they? McNamee and McAllister. Oh, this is a penalty. Oh, this is the opportunity. Just bounces up. Oh, no, it wasn't. Off his midriff. Marvin Andrews is a religious man. It's a quiet period of reflection and prayer before a big game. O'Brien, Jamie McAllister. Smith goes across to meet him. Also uh, covering back Scott Brown. Dumbbell White. Dorado was a little bit sluggish in the attempted clearance. Yeah, but you got to give credit to a corner as well. You know, it wasn't a good ball down the line term, but he tried to make it a good one by putting the defender under pressure. On an edge. Has pulled out wide again. Oh, that's clumsy. And it, well, gets a, a waggle of the hand from the referee, a grimace from the Spaniard. But no question of it being a free kick. Should good feet there, didn't he? Ryder going past Rubio. Just too quick for him on that occasion. Well, Murdoch's there, the Northern Ireland international at the far post. Hasn't scored since October. Connors at the near post, it seemed deeper than that. They were looking for Caldwell, dropped between the two, and now the quick clearance away to Fernandez. Dumbay's there with it. Support arriving, he won't be able to sit, now he may. Marvel. McNamee again on a run. And all the time as that move built up at pace, Lily had taken up a good position on the far side, they couldn't find it. Come Livingston again. That's offside, Lily. I thought that was close. See here as he tries to play it across. Yeah, maybe just a yard, just straight off Derek Lilly. What he should have been doing there, Jonathan, is looking across the line. But he's, he's moaning at the midfield players there because they're not playing it quickly enough to him. Strachan amongst the crowd here. To see him back in the game, Gordon Strachan. I hope he's back soon. Dumba. Connor chasing. Another the Frenchman across. Was at Paris Saint Germain at the start of his career. Quite make it there, Manuel Dorado. It's easy for the keeper, Wally McKenzie. He's uh, buttoned down the goalkeeping position here this season from Alan May. Wow. Chance for Brown once again to get a quality ball in, but it's blocked by Dorado. And he pulls out wide, though, on that far side, that the, uh, the Hibs right, or Ryden on the left-hand side. Livingston are, are definitely spread. Well, what's happening, Jonathan? McAllister, the left wing-back, he's pushing up into a more midfield area, and that's leaving that left-hand channel, you know, vacant. And Dorado, the, the centre-half, doesn't want to go out there. He wants to straight, stay more central, so he's giving Brown a lot of room out there. Murdoch and Corbin in there. O'Connor's in there as well. People chose to punch Ryden deep. with a decision. Lead. That's a ride in again. And a gentle clocked header back by Jamie McAllister. It was neat and tidy. 
Thought about the throw out quickly there to Burton O'Brien, but couldn't work a way through. Andy McKenzie thinking twice about it. Was at Hearts uh, for uh, about 50 odd games. I'm sure the Hibs fans will remind him of that. Thompson. Right into O'Connor. Only 20. Such youth in this Hibernian side. And Andrews, it was a risky ball. He was, caught, or was munching the yards. But McAllister came out with it. Now looks for Lilly. That's the first pass he's had in that channel throughout these opening 26 minutes. I thought it was a made the best use of it. I thought it was a foul though. I thought Doombie come in from behind and certainly brought Derek Lilly down there. He just sees a simple ball down the line. Looks straight across. He does. He goes into the back of the legs of Derek Lilly and certainly thought that was a free kick. No, but it was the way he went down. Just a, you know, split second late. Ray persuaded the referee that he'd uh, taken a tumble. Fernandez wins it back here for Livy. Scrambling stuff. And Reed picks it up for, for Hibbs and looks for the ball to O'Connor. That's well read by Marvin Andrews. Just over hit the pass there, didn't he? Looking for the run of O'Connor. But Andrews has got the pace of him there. Very strong as well in the challenge. Just held him up. front two of Livingston have got to start doing a lot more though I've noticed Fernandes in three or four occasions that he gave the, he's gave the ball away and he keeps looking around at David McNamee and blaming him this is Fernandes again support ooh slow to arrive and there's a little bit of off the ball there between Lovell and Thompson and the keeper saves easily from the McNamee cross That was a little bit nasty off the ball. I think it was Lee Mako who, and Kevin Thompson it was. McNamee puts into the danger area, but no one getting across in front of the goalkeeper there, and in the end it was easy for Anderson. Certainly Thompson, just having a word with the referee, Willie Young there. David Hay, what a player he was. Made uh, five appearances in a row. Uh, in this particular competition between 69 and 74 for Celtic. Only won one of them against um, St. Johnson, I think it was. Kenny will probably put me right at half-time. 69-70 season, I think it was. Terrific player, wasn't it? Oh, fantastic player. World Cup 74, played uh, all three games for Scotland there. I would say that about most Celtic players, though. Free kick here to Hibbs. Two men in that Livingston wall. Thompson and Cole well over it. O'Connor on the edge of the penalty area. Looking for murder. Ooh, well, the goalkeeper is irate because he went for the dodgy option, Wayne Andrews, instead of getting it away. Went for the gentle head of bat, looking for his keeper, and he's conceded a cheap corner here. I don't know what he's trying to do there, Jonathan, that's madness. You know, any pace on that head of bat from Andrews, that could have run into the back of the net. Cool, well forward. Livingston with all back bar Fernandes. Andrews away. Thompson. Cross nearly came to murder. Edge is the first man to it. Right in here for Hibbs to take on his man on the outside. Gets the cross in. Andrews, again, it could have gone anywhere. Just moments of anxiety in that Livingston penalty area now. That could have went anywhere, that opportunity. Just saying, it's a lovely ball, look from Ryden to the far post. And it just causes all sorts of problems in that Livingston defence. There's McAllister at the back post, I think it was, just comes off his body and ends up gratefully going back to Roddy McKenzie in the goal. 
You remember how far Livingston have come in, in their history from Ferranti Thistle, Medevac Thistle, and uh, Livingston in 95 96. It's lovely. And uh, Gerardo, the ball wasn't intended to him. For him, I think it was intended to go out wide to Jamie McAllister. They were looking for that left in the opening period of the game. But Hibbs have tightened it up. Ryder. Momentarily, McNamee got the wrong side. But covered and clears. Thompson to edge. O'Connor nearly at the end of that one. Caldwell. Comes to Scott Brow. Livingston cleared away. Gibbs' eighth appearance in the final of this competition since its inception back in 1946-47. The last appearance was a decade ago. They lost 2-1 to Rangers at Celtic Park. Ryden was nearly the end of that. Thompson looks for him again. McNamee turned the quicker. Oscar Rubio was, was the most intelligent of defensive clearance. Power back forward by Edge. Andrews comes out. There's a little bit of afters between Thompson and Makel. Dunbay's cross had no quality at all. Guinness, lottery millionaire, big Livy fan. Edge. Now, Lily. now they find Jamie McAllister. To the final ball from both sides to the penalty area and into the final third has been wretched. It's a good touch by McNamee. And by Lilly. Only back to him once again. Reed. Chase for Ryder. And for Oscar Rubio. The reaction of some of the Livingston players when they give the ball away is absolutely atrocious. You know, they're looking at each other and blaming each other. You know, that's not that's not exactly what you want from your players. You know, you've got to gel out there, you've got to be as a team. You know, if someone gives the ball away, you get on to him in the right way and say, come on, you know, get it down, let's start passing, let's get ourselves back into this game. Well, by edge to O'Connor. To the former Gillingham fullback, Andrews away. Level. Fernandez was fouled by Murdoch. Referee waited to see if Fernandez could get onto the ball and Inverness and uh, Livingston could keep possession. Fernandez again. Andy Williamson. His assistants Jerry McCabe and Jim Clark. They don't want better today than the uh, last occasion they were in charge of a team in the final of this competition three years ago. Come on, beaten by Celtic 3 0. Last couple of minutes got scrappy again, right? throw Rubio away. Well, that is building up to be a little bit of a contest. Thompson and Lee Makel, the experienced 30-year-old, originally from born in Sunderland, started his career at Newcastle, had spells at Blackburn and Huddersfield. Good hitter on by Lily. Fernandez. Dumbi gets across the cover and was the quicker of the two, noticeably. 
Lily again, Bustling. That's their first real shot. At least it's on target. It's all he's on doing as well. You know, he's closed people down, making it difficult, gets it straight on target. Easy save for Anderson in the end. No idea. Still dropping back there and wanted it, but now moving away. Fernandez. Showed too much of it to Thompson. O'Connor on the side. Now for Hibbs. O'Connor has Ryden in the middle. Well, Thompson pushed it through. Ryden found O'Connor and then went looking for the return. Livingston nearly undone by their sloppiness, their own sloppiness. Well, it's Fernandes, isn't it, you know, giving the ball away. He's trying to do too much on the ball when he gets it. should just give it nice. Now he needs to move. Once he's laid the ball off, said he's standing still, get on the moves. Make it difficult for defenders to pick you up. Good back. Harry O'Connor. His touch was a bit weighty. Make it in. And Lilly. Can move it wide to McAllister at Livingston. Brian has moved forward down that left hand side just going to be a picture now Nico played it and gets it back that's a fine pass back to me. that's the pass of the first half and again the cover was there very very quickly not cleared away though Fernandez I've run into the penalty area by Burton O'Brien, but uh, again, the quality of the passing was poor. Fernandez once again there, isn't it? He's just taking too long to do things. And also, when it became out to McNamee, a lovely ball from, from Mako, but his first touch lets him down. You know, he's got to get that out of his feet quickly and then deliver it into the box. Lee Mako, another man with uh, Edinburgh football in his boots, had a uh, spell at uh, Hearts moved to Livingston in December of 2001. Tell you what, him and Thompson in the middle of the park on a right dot. Ding dong, there's about three occasions they've flown with the challenges. They've been head to head on one occasion as well, which the referee didn't see. This is Thompson. Cool work. There's some space out here then. On the his right hand side for Gary Smith. pace but he's disappeared somewhat Livingston had space on their left hand side as they move forward that's been closed down Caldwell Fernandez chance here for Livingston the keeper's out of his penalty area gets the last touch and deflects it away for a corner kick that was a major opportunity for Livingston and David Fernandez. Well, it's just a straightforward ball over the top. Doombie's caught for pace. He's through Fernandez. I tell you what, he's done very well, Anderson. The end just got a slight of touches on this. He's diverted it behind for a corner kick because I think that was on target. Lily's in on the goalkeeper. Fernandez far side of the penalty area. Anderson got the touch. Rubio gives chase. Needs support, or will he settle for the throw when he gets the throw in in the end? Off Roland Edge. Lover will leave it for a long throw in to come in from David McNamee. Will it be down that line? A little bit short. Fernandez. Went for the 1 2. The keeper was alive to it. Daniel Anderson. Silver hit at Lee Mako, didn't he? A little through ball there. It was good movement from Fernandes in that occasion. Very powerful run from him. Very direct, knew exactly what he wanted to do. Double back. Five minutes to go before the half time whistle. They're not stretching. Chad Ty, Lee Makel. And uh, well, another day, that might have been given a free kick to, to Livingston. 
Andrews away. He may go. Ooh. Well, they've seen Anderson off his line there, Lee Makel. Good vision to have a look up, see where the goalkeeper was. Just turns, there he is, he has a little look up. Tries to chip him, but Anderson got back onto his line, always going over the top. He's a good player, Makel. I'm surprised that he hasn't pushed on a little bit. 30 now is Lee Makel. He's looking for his 10th goal of the season there. Another man who had uh, cut final heartache in the past. He wasn't even on the bench for Hearts here against Rangers in 98. was climbing on Fernandez. Free kick quickly taken by Lilly. David McNamee. Fernandez skipped away from Murdoch, who was cumbersome. Looking for Lilly. Just nicked away in time. And Murdoch to Thompson, and the roar from the Ivy's fans picks up again. Bryden and O'Connor have made the same run, really. And they couldn't release it wide. They couldn't get it out. And in the end, it's cleared away by Emmanuel Gerardo. The opportunity was there to find Scott Brown. Here he is. That should be a free kick. It's gone straight through it. That's a poor challenge. It really is from Gerardo. He says he's going for the ball. I'm not sure about this. Look, he knows exactly. There's the little time. He comes across. He takes a bit of the ball and a bit of Brown as well. But earlier on, Riordan, you know, he should have got his head up. There's a perfect opportunity for him just to slip the ball on to Scott Brown, who's in an acres of the room, they would have been through 1 1 with the keeper. Free kick for Hibernian. Looking for Caldwell, who was in there. Um, couldn't get any sort of meaty touch on it. A good long run out by McNamee. And he make up. Poor ball by McNamee. Level made the best of it. Maker once again. Fernandez. And McNamee has stopped his run. Who was at fault there? Fernandez for not looking or McNamee for not continuing his run? Well, he should have kept continuing his run, no question. You know, Fernandez is looking down at the ball. That's the last thing he sees. You know, he's looking at there. He's making sure that he's going to put the ball in the right area. It's up to the wing back to get down the line. Ryden challenging Rubio, Andrews slipping. Suspicion that he might have handled it when he was on the ground there. And Andrews now 28 years of age. Roland Edge with a throw in. Well, he moved to Leicester a couple of years ago. Uh, according to speculation, that is. Thompson with the chip into the penalty area. That's all just forcing it slightly there, that, you know, that ball from Kevin Thompson. Because Caldwell was, was right next to him. You know, all he has to do is pass it across the line, five, ten-yard ball, keep possession of the ball, make this Livingston side run around, because they are a bit older, and the legs will start to tire. The first meeting came on this ground. It was in the Scottish Cup semi-final in 2001. Hibs won it 3-0 ever since that day. The ascendancy between the two is ebbed and flowed. This year, Livingston have the, the two wins. And they have a chance here with Fernandez. It's good defending in the end by Edge. Just got the nick on it. Free kick goes Hibernian's way against Dorado. I thought Edge was a little bit lucky there, Jonathan, because he was the wrong side. You know, he had to put his leg around Fernandes just to get the touch on it, take it away from the striker. One minute of stoppage time. The CIS Insurance Cup final of 2004. Murdoch's gone forward and there's again the target, and again he's beaten in the air by Andrews. Lily back helping out his defence. Cheers for the referee, Willie Young from the Livingston 9000, because uh, the decision has gone their way. Oh, beaten in the air by Lilly. He hasn't seen enough of the ball, Derek Lilly, up front for Livingston. Well, the quality up to him has not been particularly good, and if you look at the, their midfield as well, 
you know, Mako's the one that's been trying to get forward. Burton O'Brien really hasn't done a lot in this game. And Stuart Lovell's, you know, sitting in front of the back three. It's got for Hibbs. The half-time whistle stops that move building up, and we haven't seen too many moves completed, to be honest, in that first half. Applause from the Livingston fans outnumbered here at Hampden Park, but as for the scoreline, with the thoughts of Pat Nevin, John Barnes and Kenny Dalgleish to come, it's nil then. Gary O'Connor to kick us off and underway in the second half, the 20-year-old from Edinburgh, and the Hibs fan through his boyhood. Here in a final for them. I'm looking forward immediately. Made by Wayne Andrew, Marvin Andrews and Lily played it back. McAllister to Fernandez. And of course, we're talking about a half time. Is he the man most likely to for Livingston then? Lee Maycott. Two minds, David McNamee, the Livingston right wing back. And there has been a, a long range pass for Livingston indeed in the game. It's come from the boot of Lee Makel. He has got that ability, John, to pick passes out from 60, 70 yards, Lee Makel. And they're sort of matching each other up in the middle of the park at the moment, aren't they? You know, Reed and, and Lovell are together, likewise. <laughs> What we've seen in that first half, Thompson and Mikla together all the time. And the other one is, is Caldwell, who's been picked up by O'Brien. Mikla, Thompson, uh, back up. Sort of over the, uh, the rule book lines a couple of times in the first half. Just to keep an eye on that one. Scott Brown, Hibbs. Dumbo. Spacey now for running edge. Thompson moves to Bill. Thompson making the run in front of him. Rubio's gone there with him. That's a corner. Only on the second half for hits. Rubio. Scott Brown is in the six yard area on the goal. A big Murdoch's coming forward now. Cornball's in there as well. It's taken short. Brown got the touch. Really could have gone. Absolutely anywhere. It may well have flicked Burton O'Brien as it came through. It didn't. It's a throw to Livingston. Oh, this is a bad miss. This really is a wonderful ball in from Thompson. You can see there, Brown is all on his own. All he has to do is get the merest of touches on this, and it's a goal. No question about it. And it just flashes across the face of the goal. No hope for player that could get on the end of it. But great chance for Scott Brown. Smith for Hibbs. Good start of the second half for them. O'Connor. Ryden wants. Gets it. A little bit ambitious. Now positive. You know, he's picked it up. He had rolling edge gone down the outside of him, but he's decided to cut inside onto his right foot. McNamee doesn't close him down early enough, gives him the chance to get his strike at goal, but he's always going wide of the goal. Roddy McKenzie's goal kick looks for Lily, beat in the air by Dumbe. Back of his Achilles, I think, in there. Murdoch away. This place passed by Caldwell. The mate. He's come forward with progressive sorties during the game. O'Connor. Well, Marvin Andrews has gone down holding the back of his ankle there as if he was clipped late as well. Has he got the pace to get away? No. And Andrews is limping. Edge for Hibbs. O'Connor. And then one to it. Rubio there. Lily. Lee Maker takes it off him. Up to me. Good run here, chance for Livingston, blocked by Murdoch. Mako! Dumbay eases it away, that's the biggest balloon in the world out there. It's enormous. Mako! Now can 
can they get the ball back in? O'Brien. Lily! And Livingston have the lead! Four minutes into the second half. And the underdogs are ahead in the CIS Insurance Cup final. Well, this has come against the run of play. Jonathan Hibbs have been doing all the attacking, but they don't clear the danger in and around the box. You can see it's a lovely ball out to the left-hand side. Look at the rim O'Brien's got. He does extremely well. Good control, picks out the pass towards Derek Lilly, and he's never going to miss from that angle. Eight yards out, lovely side foot. Strike it goal, and Anderson's got absolutely no chance. And Livingston can't believe it, they're 1-0 up. Scored the penalty winner against Dundee to get them here. A man who knows the importance of football to his life, a man who spent years as an apprentice welder at Babcock Shipyard, who's one of seven, six got laid off, moved into full-time football, went to Leeds, didn't make it there, came back to Scotland from Oxford to Dundee United. A hero with them when he kept them up against St Johnson in May of 2001. And a hero for Livingston now. Mum, who scored? Hibbs immediately force a corner down the other end. David Hay looks on. Not a flicker of emotion. There's a side lead here. And his assistants, Billy Kirkwood and Alan Preston and Paul Hegarty. Until the 13 League Cup final appearances in Scotland. Ibees is the roar though. Thompson with the corner. Murdoch was in there. Lily away. Fernandez all alone. Well, they've got a chance here. This is onside and this could absolutely kill it. Now, back to me. McAllister it is. Livingston to Hibsdale. The breakout. The pass from Fernandez. And the finish was so simple, or made to look so simple. Suspicion of offside here as well, Jonathan. You can just see as Fernandes goes to this ball through to McAllister. Is he in the offside position? Very, very close. The assistant on the far side allows him to play on. What a calculated finish this is. Can't really tell from there if he is or not. Two of the Hibernian defenders have got their hands up for offside, but that is a clinical finish from McAllister. Just puts it beyond Anderson, Anderson, curls it round him into the corner, and an excellent finish. And there's a, he's on, he's definitely on safe. Fantastic angle there, we can see. Great decision by the assistant. In his own half when the ball was played, Jamie McAllister. Suffer those cup heartaches with Aberdeen. And his days there. Good ball, wasn't it? Through to him as well. By Fernandez. Now, can they come back from this, Hibbs? Two goals in three minutes. What well, a start to the second half. I mean, hardly had a shot on that first half either side. Mm -hmm. Seven minutes into the second half, we've got two goals already. Well, Murdoch's pass had too much length. There's that young lad who made the phone call home. And the contrast. Probably on the, on the front of the bookmakers, probably in Lily for first goal. Well, it's not a bad bet if he did. That's the ninth time he scored the first goal uh, when he's netted this season in 16. But we know what Hibs are all about in this season, the CIS Insurance Cup competition. Late, late drama. Every tie there's played, they played this season in this, there's been some sort of spin at the end. Fernandez, that's clever. Lily in the middle. Oh, just poked by. Oscar Rubio, of all people, getting in there. Well, such is the confidence at the moment of Livingston players, even the centre-halves are getting forward. Lovely ball across by Fernandez. I thought Lily was just going to get a touch on it, went... Flash past him, it ended up with Rubio at the far post, but an acute angle, couldn't get the ball back across the face of the goal, it went arms the way. Right it. Thompson to get it in. 
Read out wide. This is Caldwell. Harry Smith. Poor ball off. My young Scott Brown. And the Hibs fans' frustrations beginning to grow in the stands. I wouldn't be surprised if in the next two, three minutes, maybe, Jonathan, that Bobby Wilmson makes changes. He's got a lot of young players out in that pitch and probably look for some leaders out there at the moment because they got to score very quickly and get back into this game. And others would have been on, on side, they won't have too much weight. Togetherness about Livingston. Nine of the players are ever present in this season's competition. Second half, though, Fernandez. I'm sure David A had a word with his players in, at half time and said, You know, you've not really settled down yet, lads. You've not played the way that you can. Uh, gonna say, this is not going to be in the penalty area. Oh. Again, he was allowed to come all the way. They're all over the place at the moment, Gibson. They've given the ball away constantly. You know, McNamee picks this up, drives. Good run from Rilly, takes one or two defenders away from him. Yeah, he's just got to get the ball on target. It's a great run from McNamee from that right wing back position. But there, Jonathan, you're just looking for him to be sure a little bit of composure. Unfortunately, puts it over the bar. Smith, over. Three, four men back there. And Brian completes the clearance and looks for Fernandez. Dumbe has the pace to get back. Very fortunate once again there. Dumbe keeps getting caught on the wrong side of the player that he's marking. He, he should have been inside Fernandez there. Uh, on that occasion, he's, you know, he's on the outside and allowing him to play that ball over the top. Just lucky he's quick enough to get back. Still going. Two men in the middle. Two was the Livingston keeper. Andy Williamson, the job it is for him now. We were probably thinking two minutes into that second half, there should have been one nil up. You know, Scott Brown had a terrific opportunity for a header from the Kevin Thompson's cross. He misses that, and all of a sudden he finds the side two nil down very quickly. Six-yard area, Brown is in there as well, and Ryder, and Murdoch. 
peering into the sunshine. Beyond him, Lily was back defending. Now they're stretched. This is Thompson. Darts it in. Looking for O'Connor. He just needs to put a little bit more air on that ball there. Thompson, you know, he's drove it into the near post and you've had to be a, a very quick player and need to get on the end of it. A little bit more height and could have gave his strikers a bit of chance of getting on the end of it. Roland Edge. Jonathan, it's a good cross by Ryden to the far post. Look, when Smith comes in, I mean, that's a nothing, nothing ball, isn't it? It's neither a shot or a cross. You can see by his response afterwards, very, very disappointed with his effort. Half an hour to go, just under. Perhaps must be thinking about substitutions. Be disappointed with the way they played. Maybe not for me. That's looks for Scott Brown. And uh, Rubio is holding his face. Nothing was happy with the challenge from Scott Brown there. This looks a clash of heads, both of them are just feeling it. Oh, here's the ball. Just his arms right across Rubio. The referee was spot on to give him the free kick. I think it was what happened afterwards as well between Rubio and Brown. Next up on five, the UEFA Cup fourth round, second leg, Marseille against Liverpool on the 25th. And one from the first leg. Well, he thought he was fouled by Thompson. Tom McManus is going to come on for Hibbs, the man who uh, missed out on the 2001 Cup final against Celtic. He's been around forever, Tom McManus. He's only 23. And he's going to come on. And it'll be Gary Smith who goes away. Who gets the penalty time ban? Throws in to Gary Caldwell. What are your thoughts on this, Ray? Well, I just felt it was a gamble. Playing Gary Smith, he's been out injured for a few games. Decided to give him the opportunity, but Tom McManus won't let him down, there's no question about it. He'd be very disappointed if he didn't get a, a starting position. Caldwell will go to that right hand, right back position. McManus will push up. There he is, playing right back there, Caldwell. Yeah, yeah. Famous, famous day, this will be for Livingston. One Division 3, one Division 2 a couple of times, and Division 1 in 2001. Semi finalists in this competition in 85. the middle oh unlucky Roland Edge saw the run and went with him Ryder had to check and hold it up because O'Connor had straight offside Manus that's a good defender Herbert Andrews Manus got him in the end strong he knew exactly where Manus was 
to go down that line. Just stood firm here. Andrews, but knows where he's gone. Look at that for strength. No chance he's going to get round. McManus round Andrews on that occasion. Good defending. Seems a shame, really, that uh, if Livingston win, there's still no UEFA Cup from this competition. That's a lovely romantic run in that competition last year. Dumbe heads away for Hibbs. Nothing is going right for Hibbs at the moment. Michael and Thompson. Round four. Oh, did you see what Thompson just did there? Just threw the ball at Willie Young, the referee. I'm surprised he didn't get them for that. Fernandez goes down another free kick. Scott Brown, the offender. They're just losing their discipline at the moment. Here comes the yellow card. Kevin Thompson, I think it is. Thompson and Brown both have lost their call in the last 10 minutes. Just getting wound up at the moment, aren't they? You know, two goals behind. You know, it means to, to this club to win this competition, you know what it means to the people of Edinburgh as well. 25 minutes to go. Fernandez, he's in the middle, Andrews as well, he's at the far post. But he's fouled, oh, he couldn't climb high enough. Short level, the captain gives chase with Caldwell. He's in a rush here to get on with things for Hibbs. Dumbo. Well, they can show too much of it to do, but again, was quick over the first five yards. What an edge, Thompson. London's wide, but this is through the middle. O'Connor's there as well. So to Roddy McKenzie. I think on that case, you know, Thompson kicked his leg, he's at his standing leg as he went to pick up crossing. Just over 20 minutes remain then. And Hibbs 2 0 up. Lillian McAllister. Hey. This gives chase. Can we get back into this? advantage he could have given a free kick at any stage there maybe again to Livingston definitely definitely I'll say though Lily but Fernandez looks a different player in the second half to the one seen in the first <laughs> no way to for Thompson, rolling edge, has made a lovely run down that left-hand side for him. All he has to do is put the ball out there and let him get across him. Here when he picks it up, he's always in his mind to strike the, the ball up towards goal. But look how many Livingston players are in front of him. That would have been a tremendously good shot to beat the goalkeeper from there anyway. There's so many people in front of him, should just you know, help the ball on wide and let edge get his crossing. The substitution for Hibbs. Dobby is the man who's uh, come on. Alan Reid is the man who's departed. Another forward comes on then. <laughs> Williamson went back to the club he played for as a striker Rangers and uh, for Stephen Dobby. 
three last summer. He's got a hat trick against Montrose in the round two of this competition. And here come Higgs now. Edge to the edge of the penalty area. To him, it's all rather tentative stuff from Dumbit. You can see Livingston claiming for offside, but no chance that it wasn't. Roll on edge, just could get a strike on target there. Yes, Gilbert, right up from Thompson. Well done by Paul Wells, just the bottom of your picture there now. Skill from Fernandez. There's Ravel, the Wilson captain. Caster. In the way by Dumbek. That was first to it. Over McNamee. Which goes to him. Could be as well. Use their wing backs well, Livingston. And Fernandez is one another free kick. Scott Brown again. I'm sure the referee William Young's gonna have a word with him here because that's three or four occasions. He's just lost lost the plot at the moment. He's running around and very naive. I know he's only a young man, but you know, Fernandez just holding the ball off. Not even trying to get the ball there, is he? Just determined to bring him down. Scott Shooth International. Higgs now defending. Fernandez. Oh, that's beautifully done. Murdoch blocks it, still the, the chance is on. Lovely ball by Fernandez. Look at the two Hibernian players. Caught ball watching. It's a good run from Lee Mako. Just this touch there, let him down slightly. Couldn't get under control. Put a decent ball across the face of the goal. But look at this from Fernandez. Over the top of the two Hibernian lads. Murdoch edge of the penalty area. Goes down. Again, the extra. And Scott Brown hasn't been his second half. Clint Moore in the central row. Since Gary Smith's gone off and Colgrove's coming into that right back position. He's in there alongside Kevin Thompson. It's virtually a 4 2 4 formation at the moment. I think back to that first half chance he had when he showed too much of the ball. And the goalkeeper Daniel, uh, Roddy McKenzie got a touch on it and it came out. And from the second effort in, Marvin Andrews blocked on the line. Well, his worst effort really, Jonathan, was the header just after half time when he could have made it 1 0 when he completely missed it. Edge for Hibbs. 17 minutes to go. Making the run to open up a gap. It's Dobby. It's a bit head down and rush. Away by Marvin Andrews. Back come Hibbs. Cornwall's headed down. And Willie will bring it clear and was rather cynically tripped by O'Connor. If we're in the firing line there for a minute. For a minute was a cynical challenge from O'Connor. I knew exactly what he was doing. Billy's away from him, just clips his heels. No yellow card, though. And O'Connor got one first half effort off the line by Andrews. Not for money, he's not had a sniff of a chance. We're not defending with Lily. Level forward, Fernandez. goes outside it. Easily into the hand 
hands of Daniel Anderson. And Edge again takes up the running for Hibbs. Lovell looking for Lilly, but probably Fernandes would have been the better option to the left. Lilly still full of chase. Murdoch. Stephen Dobby wants it. Wider. Just too far for it. Falky. Decent ball from Dobie. A little bit too much pace on to get away from Ryden. He's starting to peter out a little bit as well, isn't he? And he's got camp, I think. He's done a lot of running in this game, though. I don't have the fans to complain about. You got Frank, you got Frank, you got Frank, tell them to go off the pitch. A bit unfair. His fans want Ronnie McKenzie to get on with it, or the referee to make him get on with it. Out of our way, level, make the most of it. Not O'Brien's pass. And again, now Fernandez holds it up. Lorraine Dumbay. Started off at Deportivo, La Coruña, David Fernandez. Under Scotland originally with Airdrie. It's done well there. He's just providing them with something that Hibbs lack. Well, he's holding the ball up, Jonathan, a lot better than he was in the first half. And you can see he's got a few tricks as well. And he's pumped into his eye because he's created the, the second and um, second goal, which was the important one as well. 1-0. Hibbs have always got a chance, 2-0. McAllister's got a touch of crap now, look. once again 2-0 down cross looks for McManus I think this takes a deflection off McAllister as well so McKenzie does well to save this one there's the header just takes the slightest deflection off Jamie McAllister but Roddy McKenzie was there to save him Murdoch David McNamee, who was struggling so badly with Cramp, will be the man who goes away for uh, Livingston when McLaughlin comes on. This is Fernandez. Livingston have 12 minutes to hold on. Well, Fortune favours the brave. Oh, he came out of that with the ball at his feet, I don't know. Fernandez still on his haunches. This is Dobby. Oh, what a great effort! Rasping drive. Deserve better. Oh, that's a great strike. And yeah, a very positive runs inside Rubio and decides to strike it from distance. And this occasion, I think Roddy McKenzie's beat. But just the ball swerving away. Look at that inches wide of the goal. There's Bobby Wilson, he's out now, trying to drive his team forward. If we could just get one goal, we could be back in this match. Here's McNamee off. 
and McLaughlin on for Livingston. Immediately goes to the right fullback position. Just over 10 minutes to go. Support whatsoever for a punish, gonna have to hold it here. Paul Walter McManus, Dobby's in the middle. Paul well, she was down by Dorado. Sensible touch from level. Dunbeck. Fernandez just dropped off the yard. In case the header came to him, it didn't in the end. This is Brown. Oh, that's a terrible tackle. Derrida with a challenge here, isn't it? Nowhere near the ball here. The challenge on Scott Brown. Luckily, Brown sees it. He just jumps over the top of it. This could have been a real bad challenge. He's very fortunate there. He hasn't caused more damage than that tackle, Derrida. Paul well with a free kick. Murdoch in there. A come in the penalty. A little bit of a push and shove going on with Rubio. Thompson in there as well with Makel. Paul Wells free kick. It's a good bold punch away by the goalkeeper Ronnie McKenzie under all sorts of pressure. Rubio's gone down holding his head. Tackle is beginning to fly. I'll tell you what, I think this is a, an elbow here. It looked like there was an elbow here. Gary O'Connor, I think it is, at the far post who catches Rubio. I have to see this again, Jonathan. Here's the ball that comes in. You can see how many people are in here. Just watch the arm there. Well, he swings it out, and it's an afterthought from Rubio to go down. You can see they're holding each other's shirts, and there's the elbow go back from O'Connor. Definitely swinging to the right arm there in the direction of Oscar Rubio. He may have hurt his head in the initial climb yeah. with the goalkeeper, but certainly it wasn't the elbow that did that. Worried Hibs fans, eight minutes to go. This is why they're worried. They're flying to Lillian one nil. And Jamie McAllister all the way through for the second. The bounce ball to restart. Give Rubio the benefit of the doubt, Ray, and say that he was hurt in the initial area yeah. challenge, but certainly wasn't in the happened after this. He's a young man who's lost his way in this particular game. It's been coming, that, isn't it? I don't know, that's about four or five occasions in the second half that he's flown into challenges where he's never going to win the ball. Just petulance here. Frustration, I suppose. Yeah. David Fernandez doesn't deserve that from the young man. That's a cynical challenge. And the second half has gone drastically wrong for Hibbs. Rubio's back in the field. Livingston's finest hour. I have high bees now. A little bit muted. Lost on the breeze. Fernandez. O'Brien. Well, he's gonna. He's gonna have to watch it here. I think he's got one more tackle in him. And the referee will send him packing. I don't think he caught him really there, did he? He didn't really catch O'Brien there. It's an afterthought going down. Two minutes after you've been booked, Ray. He's in a challenge. Which is he's, he's, he's completely lost it in the second half. <laughs> Talented youngster. Carlson with the free kick for Murdoch. Dobby gives chase. Really was hit and hope from Hibbs. Well, 
vast majority of fans at Hamden today are going to go back to Edinburgh bitterly disappointed. You can't see it now. As we said before, though, late flourishes, the trademark of Hibbs campaign in the CIS Insurance Cup this season. This is McManus. Tumbled inside. Fernandez. And it looked worse than it was. Fernandez was stumbling. Was was clips. Was stumbling forward. He's got crap. He's been asked to come off for the last two, three minutes, Fernandez. He's been looking over the bench, motioning to him that he needs to come off. Not too much in that, is it? Fernando Pasquinelli, the Argentinian, warmed up to come on. Interesting there, rolling edge, the left back for Ben, and just come over and having a word with Scott Brown. Just tell him to calm down, and there's no point now, they're 2 0 down. We can't have someone sent off, we'll never get back into the match. Saying to the referee that uh, Fernando should be off the field of play as the Hibs fans start to leave. Thick of things there. Can you tell me why they've got the hard hats on? <laughs> Can you tell me why this is taking so long, right? It's got cramp, I think. <laughs> Hands on head, heart in the mouth time. What a moment for that. this time but it'll be difficult for Hibs to pick it up in the dying seconds after this lengthy break this has taken a ridiculous amount of time but a player who has made Terrific contribution to this second half. He stretched it away, David Fernandez. He's living some side 2 0 up, Lily and McAllister with the goals. And Pasquinelli comes on to replace him. Dorado with the free kick, looks for Pascal straight away, pushing down on Dumba. Isn't it double for Fernandes? <laughs> it's exactly the same. Ronan Edge. Dorby. Lovely, who's had a terrific game, I think, for Hibbs. Away. For uh, Livingston, I should say, away. Chance here, maybe for Brown. Oh, it's just so from Dobby. That's two attempts at goal he's had. He's been very close on both occasions. I think the keeper's beaten here. Brown just sets the ball back for Dobby. And you look at... Brody McKenzie in the goal, he doesn't even move. He knows he's beaten and that's only a foot or so over the top. Dumbay, pressurised by the substitute, Bastianelli. Into the last minute, will be a man of the match, right? Well, there have been two or three contenders, certainly Fernandes in the second half is excellent. But I'm going to give it to the captain of Livingston, Stuart Lovell. I think he's been one of the unsung heroes in the middle of the park. The work he's got through, and I think his experience alongside Mako has been the difference for Livingston today. Now for Hibbs, one last hurrah perhaps. Thompson left it, the drive by Ryden was blocked. Rolling edge first there to it. Asking at it. And Ryan back to him. 
jarring challenge by McManus. And his header gone in and not been saved by the goalkeeper. It might have been a different story. Stuart Lowell confirmed as the CIS insurance man of the match. Against his old side. Four minutes of stoppage time. Free kick to Hibbs. Anderson with the free kick forward. It's another good climb by Marvin Anderson. A terrific game for Livingston too. So I think for just chatting on. Fair balls, isn't it? Roddy McKenzie away. This is Brown. It's good tight control. He's touched to get away from O'Connor. They haven't given a good account of themselves here, Hibbs. No, they haven't, particularly in the second half. First half, I thought they, they had the better of it without really looking threatening. But this second half, apart from the chance for Scott Brown, the header very early on, and maybe two strikes from Stephen Dobby when he came on, apart from that, they have been very disappointed. Right, and that third up forward, chance for Thompson, wouldn't come down for him, level almost inevitably there, make it away. Pascanelli. Dumba's there with him, he's just trying to hold it up here. And spend some seconds. He's done a very good job. Dumba's stolen away from him in the end. I'll make it about 90 seconds to go. McManus. We're deep into stoppage time. Deep into that four minute period of stoppage time. Thompson. Livingston, government administration on the verge here of lifting their first major trophy in their first major final. Dumbe. And back to cover was McLaughlin. And away by the goalkeeper, Roddy McKenzie. Maybe Hay. What a moment for him. Told me on Friday night, forget what I achieved as a player. This would top it all. Players on wage cuts, others made redundant. They have seconds to go. They'd love a clean sheet as well. O'Connor in the middle. And then Marvin Andrews brings it away, and this is Lily. Lee Maycourt will hold on to it out there. Gerardo's gone forward and wants it played. And he's got Pasconelli in the middle. And that should just be about time up as he holds it in there. And Hibbs will bring it away. The shrill whistles you can hear from Livingston fans. McManus, should he have started for Hibbs? Away by Rubio, and a moment for him this will be. A man from Madrid, which has suffered such terrible trauma this week. 
Dunbar. And he finds Caldwell. The full time whistle blows and David Hay celebrates. And the Livingston fans join in exultation of a famous, famous day. Lillian McAllister, the goal scorers. David Hay and Livingston make history their first major trophy. And Hibs beaten, Hibs the favourites by two goals to nil. Lily was the man who got the first. O'Brien to the left ball line. And the former shipyard welder made it 1 0. And McAllister all alone to race half the length of the field. And the cup, the CIS Insurance Cup of 2004, is Livingston's. Sure, that was a thoroughly professional performance. How does it feel to be a cup winner? Well, it feels great. I mean, there's uh, a lot of relief involved. It's a very heavy pitch. It was hard work. We had a good 10-minute spell in the second half, and that was about it, but it was enough to win. You were well served by your win bikes. One of them gets a goal and the other one almost scored. Yeah, that's Fantastic right. performance. Well, we encourage them to get forward as much as we can. We would like to have played a lot better today, but as you said yourself, it's all about winning. Stuart, go and join your teammates. You're the CIS insurance man of the match. Well done. Stuart Lovell, his brother Simon, has come all the way from Australia to see him here. He'll be somewhere amongst the Livingston fans. And there is the man who played for Hibs and suffered something of a hand and jinx before this. He was on the bench in the 2001 Cup final defeat against Celtic, came on as a sub and was injured when Australia came and played Scotland here. Stuart Lovell, his goalkeeper behind him, Ronnie McKenzie, who makes the journey up the Hamden steps now. Second half hero, Fernandez being carried up on the back of a teammate, piggybacked up to get his medal. Not the green and white scarf for Stuart Lovell. But the yellow, the gold and black of the ribbons of the CIS Trophy. Being the CIS Insurance Cup of 2004 is Stuart Lovell and Livingston. Davy Hay and his backroom staff. Billy Kirkwood, Alan Preston, Paul Hegarty. All there, and a wonderful moment. Well, Kenny, they really did, did deserve a good night. Yeah, yeah they, did, they did. I mean, obviously, the, the administration thing and everything that players and the club have been through, it's a marvellous achievement for them to go through and go on and win this. And it's, I think it was alluded to earlier in the commentary, I think it's just unfortunate there's no a year for cup please for the winner. Well, it was Livingston's day. Congratulations to Livingston on a fantastic victory from Kenny Pat and myself. Goodbye. <laughs>